war. I'm going to tell you, war is something that uh, that uh, you can never prepare. It, it is it's, it is a shock to and be traumatized to in and put in a position to which I don't think anybody, no matter what age, will ever be able to be to adjust to anything. Once you witness it, you'll. You're a changed person. You'll never be the same. Sergeant Hector Medina enlisted in the United States Marine Corps on July 29, 1967, the summer he graduated from high school. He served 20 months in Vietnam. My brother, which my older brother, he, he got drafted into the Marine Corps. He, uh, he beat the shit out of me. He whipped my butt because he said, you dumbass, do you know what you did? I don't know. It's just my fate that it happened that way. and but. I'm kind of glad that I did get to go. Medina arrived in Vietnam in January of 1968, the beginning of the Tet Offensive. Within hours, he witnessed death and soon after, full combat. The mortars started coming in, they started coming in. And when they started coming in, one of them hit right behind us. And, uh, and I don't know what happened. After that, I was, I, you know, everybody was taking cover, you know. And I laid out there in that field. I didn't have my helmet, I didn't have my rifle. I was just laying out there. And they say that when you, you get, you go into heaven, you're gonna see that light. So I was looking up and, and the light, the sky was real bright. And I could see the birds flying. I could see the birds flying. I could see the birds flying. I said, oh shit, I'm dead. I'm going to heaven. And I laid there, I don't know how long. And then, boom! The shit started flying again. He said, oh shit, I'm not in heaven. And sometimes it's funny, you know, I'm not in heaven. To Medina, no one who served in Vietnam was innocent of the horrors of war. People killed. We killed. Some people, people kill without reason. And I do feel bad, I feel guilty because there, there's a part in me that, there's a part in me that, that I know that, that I did that. There's guilt in me. And I have to live with it. I'm, I'm gonna have to answer to the big man, but shit happened there. And if, if they would start hanging people for that stuff, a, a lot of our people, good people, but if you spend that time over there and you came back, you say, you were never going to be good again. You'd never be good again. Because you would have witnessed some of the worst shit that you would ever think. After returning home, Medina struggled to adjust to civilian life. I was somebody in that uniform. But once I, once I took off that uniform, I became a snotty little kid. Once I started, you know, your hair grows out. You're nobody. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows what you did. All you try to do, and, and, and then you don't want to talk about it. Because if you talk to, talk to somebody once, and then you start drinking, and then they say, shut up, make us start telling the war story again. You know, what do you do? Shut up. After that, you don't say anything. You clam up. Say, so you don't know anybody that, I mean, if I see you again, I see somebody, I don't know he's a veteran. You know, we, so after that, if you went and looked for a job, they won't hire you because you were a veteran. You're crazy. That's what they used to call it, tell you you're crazy. So the best thing was to shut up. Shut up. Medina suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and advises all who experience it to seek help early. I almost killed my wife. In a, in a nightmare. Uh, I, I mean, I, it was when I flipped out. If I would, you know, it was like she wouldn't sleep with me for a while. We couldn't go to the VA. VA didn't even want us. We couldn't go get medication. We, there was nothing for us. You know, if if, if you went over there, he said, because because I, I I had to land my messed up my back and my my back was bad. And he said, here, get some pills, and that's it. They didn't, they didn't give a shit about us. So, uh, but it was hard to, the best thing for you to do 
I would give me a six pack and drink by myself because I couldn't be with anybody. I needed the thing, I needed the help when I first, these young guys come, this one they needed because when they're drowning, that's when all the pressures, when they let you back out into the world, they want you civilian life and, and what do you do? You know, that's when they need it. They don't need it like right now. I, I already lived my life. I struggled all those years. You know, I could have been in prison easy. I could have been in prison easy. Even after his struggles, Medina is grateful for the lessons he learned in his time in Vietnam. It, it uh, gave me self-respect. It gave me a reason to live. It, because I could have given up. I could have given up, but it... I was not going to fail. I couldn't see it bringing me down. I, I, I you know, a, a lot of a lot of my friends went down. The guys that I know from high school. I mean, and and I and I, uh, I was not going to let it hold me back. But it still, I carried what I learned how to survive over there. I used it the way I worked by doing, taking care of every. Take care of your business, and you'll get out. And that's the way I looked at it.